All right, good evening, everyone. We're going to get started here. Uh, my name is Jeremy Michalazak, and I'm the Civil Harrington Director and CEO here at Phoenix Art Museum. It's great to see everybody chatting this evening, uh, and it's really wonderful to have you here. On behalf of our board, our staff, and our volunteers, I'm very excited to welcome you tonight to hear from artist Narciso Martinez. Phoenix Art Museum is honored to have recently acquired a work by Narciso, and if you haven't experienced it yet, I encourage you all to visit the Cat's main uh, galleries, where you can see it on view currently. Uh, the cat, of course, you can see this after the show, and the incredible work titled Scene Bandana. Through these 12 painted portraits on discarded produce boxes, the work offers a powerful statement and homage to the lives of labor of the lives and labor of farm workers, who often go unrecognized for their vital role they play in growing and harvesting the food we buy in grocery stores and consume on a daily basis. The museum is deeply grateful to donors who collectively, who through their collective generosity, allowed us to acquire this important work into our collection. I want to recognize those collectors, and I want to give thanks to Jessica and Calvin Beecham, John and Carrie Holberg, Jane and Mal Jazoff, Sally and Rich Lehman, Don and David Lenhart, Don and Judy O'Patrony, and Charlie and Meredith Von Arnshield. Let's give them a round of applause. <laughs> this work is in an incredible and important addition to our contemporary art holdings. And with the help of donors like the ones that I just mentioned, who support our mission of expanding our collections to better reflect and increase representation of diverse identities. You'll, come, you'll continue to hear more about acquisitions like Narciso's work that offer particularly compelling reflections on contemporary artists and topics. Before I invite Narciso up so that we can learn more about the depths of his practice, I'm happy to offer some brief background to help set, set the stage for tonight's talk. Narciso, was born, Narciso Martinez was born in Oaxaca and migrated to the United States when he was 20 years old. He attended Evans Community Adult School and completed his GED in 2006 at the age of 29. His sculptures and large multimedia installations depict richly detailed portraits of migrant farm workers amid lush agricultural, sorry about that, agricultural landscapes on discarded cardboard produce boxes. His work is informed by his own experiences as a farm worker when he spent summers picking produce in Washington State to support himself while studying at Cal State University Long Beach, where he would go on to earn both a Bachelor's of Fine Arts and Master's of Fine Arts. Narciso draws on, our, on diverse artistic influences, including 1930s social realism, street art, and his life experience growing up in a small Oaxacan farming town. His work has been exhibited both locally and internationally, and is in the collections of the Hammer Museum, the Orange County Museum of Art, the Museum of Latin American Art in Long Beach, the University of Arizona Museum of Art, and now Phoenix Art Museum, amongst many others. He has been a recipient of the prestigious Dallas Foundation MFA Fellowship in Painting and Drawing, and there's Painting and Sculpture, and most recently was the recipient of the Freeze Impact Award which was the prize that was given uh, the same day that we, of course, acquired this important work for this institution. We are incredibly privileged and grateful to have Narciso here with us and also to visit Arizona, I think, for the first time, or Phoenix for the first time. So please join me in giving an incredible warm welcome to Narciso Martinez. <laughs> Uh, I came to the United States when I was 30 years old. 
And um, the first thing I wanted to do was to learn the language because I thought that knowing what the songs were about and the movies were about was important. So I asked my brother that I wanted to go to school. So he took me to Hollywood High uh, in California. And uh, so yeah, I enrolled in English classes in the evenings, probably from 6 to 9. And uh, at the same time, I was working at a tire shop. And uh, my boss told me I could go to school anymore because it was, especially in the summer, because uh, there was still daylight, so there were still customers, and she wanted me to be at the shop, so I stopped going to school. But she suggested I could go to a different school called Evans Community at also in downtown LA. And, uh, well, luckily for me, it was a better school because they had English classes all day. So I was able to enroll in the mornings from like 6 to, from like six to, uh, to 10, and then just go to work all day. But anyways, I spent probably like 10 years studying English. And uh, at the end of the program, I, I'm exaggerating, it's more like six years. But at the end of the program, I, I wasn't able to speak English. So I was able to write sentences and paragraphs, but I wasn't able to speak. Um, so I told my teachers, I want to take the whole course again because I want to learn how to speak English. And they told me, no, 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 you, you're done. If you, you, just, you should just keep taking classes. So luckily for me, they, have, they had a high school uh, program for adults in the same school. So, I enrolled in the high school program, and um, I just kept taking classes. Um, I, it was the words of my teachers who actually encouraged me to, to do that. While I was taking classes, I noticed that I was doing good at my grades, because when I was in Mexico, I, I was only able to go to ninth grade. I got kicked out of tenth grade because I failed more than three classes. And obviously all my classes were really, really low, my grades were really low. So here in the United States, I had to start from the beginning. And I, um, so I was, I, I noticed that I was doing really well. I had good grades and I was so proud of it. And it was in that period that, um, that I actually, that I actually fell in love with learning. And I realized that I, I wanted to have an education. I realized that uh, my family, I, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm from a, sort of like a big family with six siblings, and uh, at that time everyone was already married and had a bunch of kids and were struggling and they had arguments with their spouses, and I was like, I don't want that for myself. I want, I want to, and nobody had a college degree. I was like, I want to be the first one who found to have a college degree. So I made it my goal. So after I finished high school in 2006, I uh, enrolled at uh, Los Angeles Community College, and uh, there I was, uh, I didn't know what to study yet, so I was just taking my general education classes, and I was, well, I was still doing good, and uh, I was doing so good, especially in my math classes and sciences, that I wanted to, I wanted, first I wanted to be, to be a math teacher, right, and then, and then I wanted to, but I thought, oh, math is so easy, I want something more challenging. So biology was challenging, and I was like, I want to be a biologist. I was chosen to, to work at a, as a lab assistant for the biology department. I was super excited. So unfortunately, I didn't have documents, so I couldn't work. So that was very disappointing. And I was like, what's the point of studying? What's the point of going to school? And um, so I had to finish all my classes regardless. So I took an art history class, right? And it was there where I learned about the works of European artists like Vincent van Gogh and Jean-François Millet, who painted um, agricultural landscapes. Uh, they painted peasants. And because I grew up in a small town, in, agriculture, in an agricultural town back in Oaxaca, I, I thought I could learn how to paint, because at this point I had never painted, but I thought I could learn how to paint and how to draw better, because I had been drawing since I was a kid, but never painted. So I can learn how to paint, I can learn how to draw better, and then I can go anywhere I want and paint, right? I can even go back to my hometown, paint my neighbors, my, my parents, and, and the landscapes, which were similar to the paintings of Van Gogh and I was like, okay, this is, this is what I'm going to do. 
So I asked my counselors, how do you get to that school? So they draw a map for me. They, they advised me to go to the class I need to take. And I enrolled at Castle Long Beach um, in 2009. So after um, the first semester, the first semester was OK. All this time, I've been financing all my studies on my own, working as a busboy, washing cars, and washing dishes, and working on purpose for house. And uh, I, I was doing OK. But after the first semester at Castle Long Beach, my savings were really, really low. And I, I figured I was not going to make it to the next semester. So I told this to my, my family members. Uh, I had two brothers and one sister uh, working in the fields in Washington State. And I told them my situation. And they suggested I should go work in the fields, save some money. They would provide me with food and shelter and, um, so that I could save on my paycheck. So that I decided to do the trial. I took a little bit of absence. I went to Washington State. And I worked for. Um, for the whole semester and the, fall, the following summer. And I went back to school the following semester. And it, it sort of worked out. I finished my, um, my bachelor's degree in art in 2012. And then from 2012 to 2015, I didn't know what to do. So I went back to the fields. I still owe some money regardless to family members and friends. So I worked for those three years. And um, believe it or not, I was still not confident in my English. So I, I just keep thinking about the words of my teachers that I just need to take more classes. So I decided to go to grad school. I, I went back to, when, when one of my visits to, uh, to Long Beach, I visited some of my friends, some friends and some of my old professors. Uh, they suggested I should apply to Council Long Beach for the graduate program. So luckily for me, I was, well not luckily, but I, I never stopped painting or drawing. Uh, you know, during those three years, I did a bunch of uh, studies, uh, planner studies and drawings. So I, I was able to, to, have, uh, to put together a portfolio for my uh, application. So I got accepted and, um, and I was able to, um, to get into the program. Uh, so at this time, it was 2015. Um, at this time, the Dream Act has passed. I, I believe it, it passed in 2011 or 2012. Um, where, uh, so the Dream Act allowed undocumented students to, um, to get financial aid. So before that, I, I really, really struggled in the undergrad because um, <coughs> there was no such thing as Dream Act, so I had to pay everything out of my pocket. But the graduate program was a little less difficult. Uh, but I decided to do the same, to the same formula. I would go back to the fields, work with my family. As soon as uh, class would end, classes would end, I'll I'll be on my way to Washington State, and then uh, as right before the day before the semester would start, I would go back again, so that I could make the most out of the time. So I did that. I graduated in 2015. Um, in 2020, 20, sorry, I I did that from 2015 to 2018. Which is when I graduated with a master's degree in art, um, with emphasis on drawing and painting. Um, so after that, I, I just can I just have a bunch of projects right after graduated in Long Beach, so I decided to settle in Long Beach, and now we're here. Which now it's kind of a weird moment because I don't know how to, tra um, I guess, transfer what I'm saying to the slides. So I'm just gonna go ahead and go straight to the slides. So I'm going to go back to um, 2012 when I was doing my uh, my undergraduate studies. Like I said, I was very interested by Vincent uh, Van Gogh and and Millet, and I was literally trying to paint like like Van Gogh. So you can see these these colorful landscapes, uh, full of uh, little um, brush strokes, and uh, and I was very interested in the landscape. I really put a figure here and there, but it was more about the landscapes and the colors, and. Um, for, for the graduation show in 2012, I had to do uh, work that, um, I guess they were trying to introduce us to concept. What is the painting about? Instead of just uh, demonstrating that we know how to paint. So for this project, I thought of the, um, of the Occupy movement that started I don't know, some, somewhere in 2009. A lot of my classmates were talking about it. And so I, 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 get, 
I can send it to like learn a little bit about it, and it was about um, the communities being unhappy with the system and the um, the disparities between the wealthy and the working class. So I decided to make a painting about it. I call it 99 plus one, uh, referring to the 99 percent and the one percent. And I did this um, uh, dinner party where that represents the wealthy, and in the background the, it represents the working class. So because I was looking at the fields, for me that was working class. And uh, so when I went back to the graduate program in 2015, I thought I could go back to the same concept, right? The working class, the wealthy, and um, I, I started, I actually did some paintings, uh, oil paintings about it, and I was literally painting one man in a suit next to a flower. That was kind of problematic. And I was having a lot of uh, critiques that were not very favorable, I guess. And uh, it, the critiques were really about whether I was or wasn't a good painter, uh, whether or not my figures were well proportioned, and I got frustrated. I stopped painting, and during the winter break, I went back to what I like to do during that period of time between 2012 and 2015, which was painting or drawing on cardboard. So these are uh, a sample of works that I did between 20, 2012 and 2015. Um, where uh, my sister, we go to Costco, gets some the groceries. As you may know, Costco gets boxes instead of bags. So I would cut out, cut out the edges of the, bo the boxes and draw on the good part of the box, which was the bottom part. And, um, and so, my, interestingly enough, my brother, I was helping my brother during this winter break at his shop. He has an upholstery shop. So I was helping him out, and he sent me to get pizza custom. And then I saw this box. So I took it with me, it landed in my studio and, and campus. And then I drew this banana man on this banana box. He was not a school assignment, it was just me being enjoying drawing for the second drawing. And uh, if you notice the banana man, I don't I never been to a banana plantation, so I, I just thought it's a banana box. I'll just Google a banana man working field, so that's Came out. So the following semester I had to present something to the class. So I went on and I brought my drawing. I was like, I'm very scared, very scared of what they would say. So I just carried them. I, I still remembering the wind blowing in there. I was like, sorry, I didn't want to go. But I did go into the classroom and fortunately they liked it. Um, I, I remember critique was not about technicality anymore. There were more questions about who this person was, and uh, whether or not I knew this person, whether or not I work in the fields, and um, and this whole idea of the wealthy and the working class came together, and maybe it narrowed down to the farm worker and the agribusiness, right? The labels represented the agribusiness. I didn't have to draw a man in a suit, and then the marks, the mark makings, were representing. So that's sort of like a moment where everything came together and I remember one of my committee members was, was saying, let's not get excited, let's see how serious Narcissus is with this. And so for me that was the key word, seriousness. And from there on I started collecting boxes, putting boxes together, and I did um, sculptures. Um, I remember uh, one of my committee members wanted me to draw a box, but I had a friend who worked at a trade show and she would bring me boxes sometimes. So there was one this time. There was this time when she brought me a lot of boxes. And as we we, we were carrying them on stops from her car to the studio, we put them next to another. And I thought, what if I just draw on this? So I started stacking more boxes on top of it, so to make it a little taller. And uh, and then there was the question of what do I draw? So it was at that time where Donald Trump was running for president and I, I was hearing all these negative things about Latino people, Mexican people. And I decided to do a drawing that would represent the contribution of the Latino people, right? And I wanted, a, uh, I wanted a, uh, an idea of bountiness. 
So this is the, this was the first time that I started using collage in the work. I drew these farm workers or like presenting the, the produce, and the boxes only have like maybe one or two images of produce in there. So I started peeling off images of more produce on different boxes and then colliding them on these boxes. So that, that's where the idea of collage started. So another idea that I started introducing in my work was um, the vintage labels. I was doing I was doing a paper for my art history class and uh, it was a very specific kind of topic. We had to figure out how much uh, farm workers were depicted in art during the 1930s and 40s. And I was, you know, I was going through my research, and I ran out. I, I, I found out that, that there are so many vintage labels that used um, very idealistic imagery or illustration of uh, nice-looking people or kids or um, or animals like dogs or cats. And then I saw this image, right? And um, I was like, what? What if I? Introduce this nice looking lady and draw her next to actual farm workers. So I did this um, portrait of three, oh, it's a family, it's not a, the mom, dad, and, and kid, it's actually the mom and two kids. Um, I met them when when I was, uh, the first year I started working in the field speaking as far as um, they had some issues, the, the couple had some issues, uh, so the dad left them and the mom had to raise the kids, and that's as soon as they were old enough, they, you know, they were in the fields helping them out. So I decided to uh, put them next to each other and see what happens. But when I was drawing the nice looking lady, actually, I thought of the, all the, uh, I guess, danger or risk that farm, farm workers have to go through when in the fields, uh, like falling from the ladder or the pesticides. And I decided to convert the nice looking lady into a skeleton. Um, sort of also sort of like inspired on the on this code that symbolizes toxicity behind the trucks. I remember seeing that a lot. So that's what it comes from. And here's another example of um, of a uh, beach label combined with, with imagery of actual fun workers. Uh, for this one, I, I I sort of wanted to illustrate how how farm workers uh, have lunch in the fields, right? It's sort of to me when I when at some point it came to me like why is it that we eat on the ground <laughs> like like literally on the ground we sit on the ground and who knows what's on the grass like residues of pesticides and, and any chemicals because later on I worked with my orchard where I had to oversee the chemicals so I I still wanted to illustrate that being a fair with the with the life of the more, I guess, the more fortunate people. In this case, the, the queen, she's holding a, a balance, and the balance is unbalanced. Um, I, I wanted to make that point across, not just illustrating the, 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 the imaging of the label, right? So, I also experimented later on, but I, I, sort of like at the same time, I was I was uh, doing these drawings on these cover boxes. These are, these are actually ceramic tiles, but this same composition was made on the cardboard at the same time, so like 2016. And for me, well, I wanted to illustrate what I did in the field, so I, I, I picked asparagus, there's a person picking asparagus, picking cherries or apples. I, at one point, like I said, I worked at a, at a brand new orchard where we had to Deep pictures and and so like plant these metal bars that would eventually hold the trees. But the takeaway for me for this composition was the time where we all sit around and have lunch. I think because I was being in in in, um, in an academia setting and also I was in fields picking fruit with this other community, uh, I sort of felt like the differences, right? And I wanted, I wanted my, I wanted to encourage my community to experiment, or at least have the, have the opportunity to experiment what I was experiencing. So I would encourage them to go to school. Um, I would tell them to go to um, English classes to the local school, 
And of course, there was always this uh, bunch of excuses, right? Like, um, uh, I'm too old to learn, or I, I'm too tired at the end of the day, I just want to have a drink, um, and just pass that, I guess. But I, I mean, it's understandable, right? Because I did work in the fields, I know how tiring it is, and there's no, sometimes there's no motivation to like go to school in the, at night because we have to get up early in the morning, like around four, right, in the morning. So who wants to do that? So I guess I understand. But I will always encourage them to encourage their kids to go to school. I feel like, I feel like when we go to school, we sort of like understand, like, uh, uh, we understand our rights and we are better off at defending ourselves. Like so I think this other piece that has to do with education. It's a group of young kids uh, just sitting at a stairwell uh, in front of a trailer where they lived. Um, and I sort of like, I'm sort of like foreshadowing the future by painting um, some caps, graduation caps on the shadows. It's maybe it's kind of hard to see, but there they are. And uh, I, I like that idea of continuing encouraging the new generations to go to school because based on my experience, I feel like um, it's important enough. It's important to to know our position in society. So I, I graduated in 2018. I had the opportunity to have a residency at the Long Beach Museum of Art and um, with the option of having a, a solo show at the end. So for that exhibition, I did this large, sort of like large painting, about 24 feet. And uh, I feel like the idea was sort of like the same. I wanted to honor farm workers. I wanted to, to um, I wanted to tell the viewers how important they were for the economy and, uh, and for the system, right? And I, based on the, I guess I call it the golden standard economy, that it doesn't exist anymore. So I started using gold beating. Um, I borrowed the pattern of the dollar bill and I included them in this piece and I used the golden to decorate it. And with that, I was sort of like introduced, I was introduced, I was introducing gold leafing to myself and I was introducing it to the world because this is the first time I was doing it. Um, there, yeah, I guess I, I should save that for later, but uh, I was also inspired later on by re religious iconography. Um, the images on this piece is sort of like uh, I wanted a female first in the center because I, you know they, it's not a secret, right? Um, throughout history, women have, women have been oppressed, and uh, I, have, I have sisters, I have aunts, and my mom, and and it, it was always more difficult for them growing up, and uh, and I just sort of like wanted to honor women by. Uh, painting a female figure on the center, and it's sort of like super large, and a group of people working on one side, and a group of people resting on the other side, and the four, the the front of the piece have actually has actually an installation of oil paintings. Uh, these are small paintings uh, of produce like oranges and apples and uh, blueberries and strawberries, and they are all. Uh, arranged in actual food packages and then presented on the front. I guess for me that was the idea of saying um, every time we go to a grocery store we see these beautiful produce every year they seem to be shinier and bigger but very few people know what has to go behind it to get for those produce to be there. There's so many chemicals that people working the food really hard so I sort of wanted to be to make that contrast, right, between the viewer, the produce, and the people who are behind the produce. So I really wanted to. This was my first year after graduation, and I really wanted to create consciousness, I guess, about who my audience was. And because I was at a museum, and I noticed that my audience was becoming more about the galleries and the museums and curators. And which is great, but I also thought that um, the farm workers, I wanted the farmers to also to be my audience. And and I remember when I, towards the end, maybe in the middle of the program, I was invited to do, uh, to participate in a group show at this gallery 
which specializes in the in the performance architecture. And I, I, I feel like I'm shy, and I'm, I, I don't know if I'm able to ever be able to be to do a performance art, but I wanted to do an interactive piece. And then, because I mentioned before, I worked in a produce warehouse where I sorted out fruit, and the fence, the fanciest fruit, the better percentage it is. So, like the more expensive fruit, they they usually wrapped individually in a fancy kind of box paper. So I wanted to do the same. I wanted to have the same idea, and I wrapped these apples um, with tracing paper, and each tracing paper had a portrait of a farm worker. So I wanted the, the viewer or the participant to grab an apple and unwrap the apple and have sort of like an interaction with the farm worker. So here is a post by this artist, Joseph Vasquez, who posted it on his social media, and hopefully the video. So another, so this is another sort of like interaction I had in school, like sort of like learning how to do that, how to interact with the community, with the public. So there was this uh, coming out of the shadows event, the shadows event where um, undocumented students came out and shared their stories, and uh, they invited me to to have my work next to the stages, the stage, and I thought it was like a very interesting. Um, Combination because a lot of the times, like undocumented student, undocumented students and undocumented uh, individuals who are in, under the DACA program, they somehow well they have a document right that allows them to work, but a lot of the farm workers don't have any documents, so they cannot even work or they cannot even travel. I guess all this to say that some undocumented are better off than other undocumented. So there's differences in undocumented. <laughs> um, I also painted this utility box in Long Beach. So that's another way of interacting with the community. And since I was commissioned by the city to do this, um, to do this um, sort of like public work, I feel like the city was acknowledging the, the, the presence of farm workers in the city, in their communities, and in the country, right? And then I wanted like a more direct interaction with the farm working community. So I, I, I figured I can't bring this work to the communities because they are on cardboard. So what I did was I printed them life size on vinyl, and I, in the first experiment, I took them to the community that I work in Washington State. Um, at first, I thought I could just go ask to the uh, owners of the local uh, stores and see if I could put them on, on the walls. But my brother, who was kind of like a big, big advocate of my work, decided that he wanted to go further and speak with the authorities in the community to see if, if they could place them in a more um, in a more uh, visited building, I guess. So, because I was visiting only for a few days and then him in charge of it, and it turns out he was able to have the city uh, display two of the works in the local park and two of the works in the local library. So that was a, uh, that was a, a cool thing that he did for the work, and, and I'm just happy every time I see him just of, of farm workers just interacting with the, with the pieces, right? And this year, I decided to give it a try. I had a small budget, and we printed some calendars of the work, and we distributed among our workers uh, whilst financing. Hopefully, this year or the next year, we're going to have a different plan, so we can print more calendars for more farm workers to see the art at least in this way. And this is sort of like another way for me to interact with the community in the future.
I really, really want to go out there in other uh, communities, like farm working communities, to get to know these people and to get to hear the stories. Because I feel like anywhere, farm workers are always screwed up. Anywhere. Uh, whether it's in the banana plantations, in the coffee bean plantations, uh, the coffee bean plantations, I feel like they're always like at the bottom of their social strata for some reason. And, uh, and, and I want to know about their stories. I want to paint them. I want them to know that people are looking out, looking out um, and that are at least trying to share those stories. While well, I was in school, I also did some pre-making. And uh, the first series of portraits that I did, uh, they all were covered up, right? And I printed them on regular paper, and people were thinking, uh, why are you painting um, terrorists or gangsters? And I had to come up with a different idea, so I cut out these um, small instructions that we get in the field that tells us how to take care of ourselves when doing the heat or because, or because of the pesticides. And I started cutting them out and pasting them out underneath them. And the problem was that they were like kind of too small, they were in Spanish, and, uh, and I ran, ran out of them. So I kept experimenting and I printed them on, uh, on vellum. And I wanted, I wanted to still have the context of the field, so I did collage with produce labels and I mounted them on top of them. So I kind of like this, this end product, so I left it like that. But all the, the farm workers were covered up. Um, I guess I guess sometimes farm workers take their their um, take their protective gear off because when they work by the contract uh, they have to make the most of the time and it's really hard to be with the bandana on. The glasses get foggy, or um, if you want the glass to be clear, you have to take the banana off, which means you have to be breathing all the dust and the debris from pesticides and branches. So it's kind of like a really kind of sad reality. So these are kind of like the first portraits I did on boxes with both leaf in the back in the background. But if you notice, they are covered up. When I did a project at, um, in Fresno, in California. Uh, Fresno, California, it's a very agricultural community. And I was so excited to talk to all these farm workers that came to the show. They kind of wanted to share the stories. I found very, a lot of similarities in our stories. And at that moment, I was like, I want to make some work so that people can see these people. So as soon as I came back from that, from that project, I started working on, this, on the drawings of um, the Simbandana project. Um, I wanted to show their features. I wanted to the viewer to see what they look like, right? And uh, and in order to make them more important, I added the cold leaf in the back. The cold leaf, um, like I said, it started with the golden standard economy, but also from my uh, experiences as uh, growing up in Oaxaca, where my neighbor who happens to be my uncle, was in charge of uh, decorating the church every year. So he uses a lot of shiny paper, a lot of gold, gold, golden paper. And, uh, and I remember going to the church when I was a kid, and even though it was against my will, I was there with my parents. And, and, um, but I was in awe with, with the golden frames and with the candle lights, with the, with the dim light that would come through the windows. And I, it, I was just, it was just fascinating. And, and I feel like all of that came through when I was doing these pieces. And, um, and I wanted to give importance to the, to the individuals by putting a goal in the background. Craft Contemporary Art Museum in Los Angeles invited me to do a show called Many. And I just happened to have all these boxes. It's not like I planned to have 12 images. I just happen to have two old boxes in the studio. And so that's what I did. And so this is an installation at Craft Contemporary in Los Angeles. Um, it was the wall was large enough in my studio, so that's how I had it. And that's how it traveled to the museum. During the exhibition, I had to move studios. 
And when when the show was over and they returned to work, it was in my new studio. My new studio was smaller. I did not have a, a larger wall. So I had to figure out how to hang it. So this is the new installation. I feel like I have more time to meditate on it. And, uh, and because of the nature of the narrow wall, it came to be this way. But at the same time, I was also thinking about the imagery in, in the castle churches. And so that's how I started. And um, along came the call for art, in uh, the call for art for the Freeze Impact Prize um, project. And I, so there's a whole story behind it, but at the end of the day, I submitted this piece. And then they chose the piece for the prize, and, and for it to be displayed at Freeze LA in 2020. So this is this is like a couple of installations of, of, of Prince LA this year. And um, and I feel like we're gonna end with the last slide. And I'm, I, I feel like I, I'm just gonna read the statement I wrote for this piece. I've drawn portraits of farm workers before, usually with hoodies, bandanas, masks, and on goggles, portraying them uncomfortable state they have to work on to harvest the produce that sustain the communities. For this series though, I wanted to acknowledge their humanity. By rendering their features and removing their facial work gear that protects them from biocide residues and the harsh weather conditions in fields. Leaving them exposing um, leaving them in a position of vulnerability, showing who they are and what they look like. The usage of the produce carbon boxes as support is an attempt to spark conversations about inequity between the well-off and the less fortunate. By acknowledging the farm workers' humanity and showing what they look like, I hope the viewer can empathize, be grateful and respectful towards them and their contribution to our nation. Thank you. So it's, it's truly a privilege to really have the experience to really learn about an artist, to really learn about a practice, and to see a work that you see on a wall in a museum to really understand where it comes from. We don't always get that privilege uh, when we go to museums, so it's really, we're really grateful to have you here and to really learn and really have Narciso share this story about this really pivotal piece here at the Phoenix Art Museum. So on behalf of the museum, we want to thank you so much for joining us this evening. There's more opportunities to hear from artists, including our Lenhart Lecture coming up with Leonardo Drew in early November. So we hope you come back and again, have this opportunity and this privilege to hear from artists and really learn more about the works in museums, how they get there, really the incredible stories behind them and the impacts that they can have in their communities. So thank you so much for being here. We really appreciate it. And we hope you see the Mercy So Peace in the cafe. So have a great evening. Thank you.